Hey guys, EVP Man here. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new version of the Creality Laser Falcon. This is the 10 watt version. Uh, we've seen the 5 watt on the market already, but this is the brand new version that has uh, double the power. Now this laser engraver has all the attributes that you found in the 5 watt version, just has that upgraded laser that's going to give you faster burns uh, or engraves, uh, faster cuts, uh, and it's also going to have the same experience that you've had with the 5. So 10 watts, uh, also a 0.6 millimeter uh, type uh, resolution. Uh, you're looking at 12 millimeter uh, one pass cutting as well. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it has the built-in leveler, uh, and you've seen this also in the previous version. And the work area is a 400 by 415 millimeter uh, space. So again, very generous space for a lot of creative things. Now, what makes this laser engraver something that you may want to consider is the variety of materials that you're going to be able to engrave. We're talking about leather. We're talking about wood. You're also looking at bamboo, acrylic, uh, ceramic, um, even stainless steel and dark metals. So you have a wide variety of materials that you can cut and also engrave. Now, you have a lot of flexibility also when it comes to the type of software that you can use. You can either use Lightburn, which is what I would highly recommend and prefer, or Laser Gerbil as well. Uh, Lightburn is what you'll see us doing in our tests. So let's go ahead and check out uh, this upgraded laser engraver and why you may want to consider it. And you'll see all the things that we've engraved or cut. Now the CR Laser Falcon engraver that we, you see here is the 10 watt version. This is one that is just being recently released. And for the most part, when you think about the actual uh, frame and, and, and what you see here, it's gonna be very similar, if not the same, as the uh, lesser version, the five watt version, with the exception of the laser. And there are some differences that you'll see in a couple seconds with the laser itself. But the frame, the level that it has, the construction, again, you're gonna see the same attributes here. Now, this one's gonna have a 0 0.06 millimeter, uh, again, uh, precision when it comes to engraving, 12 millimeter, uh, one pass cut, and it shares, again, that ease of use that we saw with the uh, previous laser. Now, again, big deal here is that you have a 10 watt laser compared to the laser that we've had uh, with the five and that it's also what it's actually doing to get that 10 watt is that it actually has six lenses that converge that are gonna give you kind of like that high uh, resolution and also that high power. Now, to focus, what you have here is this little guy right here. So, so when you're gonna focus, basically you have this level and you lay it on the surface of the material that you're gonna be cutting. And so you have, if you're gonna cut, uh, depending on the size of the material and then also if you can engrave and then once you do that so you basically put it right underneath this like this and then you adjust these two sides right here lower or higher higher it depending on the material that you're going to cut and then you're pretty much set to go and then you can just put it back just like this uh, just so that you don't lose it right now uh, a couple other things that we'll talk about about the laser is that you know it does have you know if you're always if you're wondering if your laser is level or not i really like that it has this little bubble here uh, this little bubble here is going to give you again a lot of information when it comes to uh, just being able to keep things level and if you don't have things level then your cuts may be too deep on one side um, or just the overall quality of your engraving is not going to look as good as you'd like it to be so uh, other things to highlight here is the fact that you have like this little one pu push uh, or one button push module. This is the controller, right? So basically you have your little flip switch here to power it up. And then what you have is this little button. Now the cool thing about this is that if you have a micro SD card in this unit and you power it up and it actually has the actual, uh, let's say compiled file for engraving, it will basically allow you to with a single button uh, frame what you want to see uh, cut based on what's in the file, and you only want to have one file in there. And then if you press it again, it will actually start the cut without having any, uh, any PC or laptop connected to it, which I think is pretty great. So it really makes this uh, very easy to use in that sense. But remember, you only want to have one file on this. Now, this is going to work for engraving. This is going to work for cutting. It's whatever function you want the actual uh, engraver to start uh, that is found on that file. Now, one of the things I like about the design of this specific unit is how you have everything has measuring points. And you'll notice that right here you have the same thing. So you have some measuring points right there that you can see. So that's giving you that. And then you even have them here at the very top. So this is going to allow you to have a better degree of precision. Or as you're looking to try and to square this, that's going to really help. Now, taking a look at the laser right here, you'll see that 
Uh, not a lot going on here, uh, but on the side here you have these two knobs that are going to allow you to move the actual laser head up and down. Uh, the bottom portion here comes off, it's magnetic, um, and then when you put it back in, it just goes into place just like this. Now, we don't have an air assist with this unit, uh, but it does seem to blow things away, but I did notice some charring uh, because we, we don't have an air assist module to test with this. And, and that's pretty normal when you see lasers, that especially the, la the air assist blows the actual material as it's being cut, and then what it does is it prevents it from flaring up or you know building up any kind of soot as it's cutting. So that's something that uh, we'll see if we get one of those so that we can test. Now one other thing that we'll highlight about the laser before we actually see it in action is that it does have rubber feet on every corner. And one of the things that I really like about the laser is also that it has limit switches. And what the limit switch does is that as the laser is moving, it actually stops it from actually banging into the frame. And that's really important, especially as you're working with engravings and you don't want it to go too far off of the actual frame. So. As this moves forwards, there's a little switch that you can see here. It taps this little, um, this little post, and it knows that that's the stop. And it has the same thing on each side. So that really makes this um, easier to use. Uh, there's really nothing more to it. So the other thing I like is that all of this stuff comes nicely already, uh, I would say, tied down. So when you put this together, there, are, there, is a, there is some assembly. It could look intimidating, but all you have to do is really take your time. There is a video that you can watch also to put this thing together, and it takes maybe about 15 minutes at tops. Just take your time and put it together, and then plug it in, and it's going to work. Now, in our setup, we have it connected via this USB-C. It has to be a USB-C uh, 3.0 cable, and I'm bringing it from USB-C uh, to also USB-A, and I'm going to be using Lightburn. Uh, but before we go into that, I just want to show you some of the prints or some of the cuts that I've done. Now, we did a first experimental cut, um, and this is a model that is on the Creality uh, micro SD that comes with the unit. And what you can see here is that what I was mentioning, uh, this charring that you see is pretty normal when you have a lot of power. Uh, there's a power and speed uh, adjustment that would need to be made and you don't have air assist because it's so finite and there's so much detail there that it tends to, to flare up and that's just speaking to the power of the laser. You'll notice that in other areas it's a little bit cleaner, right? Especially here because there's not a lot of detail that it has to cut, uh, but this is what uh, the cutting experience was. Now, we didn't get a full 100% cut and you can see that some of the cuts over here didn't uh, go through completely. We're gonna be running our own, uh, this is just their file, to see how this works. Now. There's a variety of material that you can engrave. Uh, so if you're thinking about engraving this type of material, cork, not a problem. This is very soft material. This is going to burn well, and it's going to give you a real nice black finish here. Uh, but what I prefer and I really like is this, a slate. So take a look at that slate right there, and look at how nice that looks. Now, this doesn't really have any, um, any special treatment um, added after the actual engraving. Um, I actually... Uh, gave this a matte finish really quick uh, so that just uh, so this could have a certain amount of seal and then we ran this on the laser and we just made this design uh, with the Creality kind of uh, brand and you know the Laser Falcon here and this is the kind of stuff that you can make with this right so you'll be able to also not only engrave things like this but you'll be able to also engrave glass if you had a rotary or if you uh, want to engrave any other materials, uh, it's pretty flexible. Uh, one of the things I will highlight is that if you are engraving material that's highly reflective, what you want to do is put some tape on it so that the, ref uh, so that the reflective material doesn't, um, I would say, reflect the actual laser so that it does a good deal of cutting. Um, and then some people also even put some paint on top of stuff that happens to be clear or glass-based, like reflective mirrors, so that you can get the, a nice etch. But very, very happy with that quality that you see here. And what we're going to do next is that we're going to run another burn, but this is going to be, we're going to do the same image that you see here, uh, but we're going to try to do it on um, a piece of wood so that we can see how well it performs. But I'm going to do my own slicing on this sheet of wood. All right, so now the very first thing we're going to do is make sure we have the right focus, right? And you can see what the thickness of my material is. And it basically has each one of the material uh, thicknesses if you want to do a cut. And so what we're going to do is just loosen this size right here, this side right here. Uh, the laser is going to drop down. It's resting right on this piece. You're just going to tighten each one of these. They're going to be hand tight, right? So, and then you just remove it and it's going to stay in place. So now that that's pretty good, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into Lightburn. I'm, I prefer using Lightburn. There's a free software that you can use. Uh, Lightburn is a paid uh, software. 
but it's one of the most powerful software uh, for laser engravers on the market and it gives you a lot of flexibility. So we're going to basically uh, set a cut and then a, an engrave. And actually what we're going to do is the engrave first and then we're going to do the cut. So we're going to see how that works. Now Lightburn is a pretty powerful application and it has a lot of flexibility uh, that I really, really like. Uh, first of all, what you can see here is this is the graphic that I had created, uh, really focused on uh, two parts. So the first part that you see right here, this is going to be the engraving. And then this part that you see in blue is going to be what's going to be cut. Um, you can see up here on the upper side, on the upper right hand corner, uh, you can see the actual one says fill, which this is going to be filled. And then the other one says line. And that's what the line is. You'll notice that the power is different. So I have power rating is 100 on both of these, but the speed is a little bit different. Now what's going to happen is first, because this is one's on top, the black one, it's going to first engrave this, then after it's engraved it, it's going to cut this. And I have each one has a different setting so that it first completes one, then it does the second. I typically don't cut first because if I do, the the actual item is going to shift, and if it shifts, then you're not going to get things as you'd like. This has been centered because there's some tools up here that allow you to center vertically and horizontally, so that's kind of like where I want it to be. Now, I've enclosed the printer in this enclosure because it um, really helps with the fume and the smoke. Um, I don't really see a lot of that coming from a slate, but in this case, this is what you would see. Now, in this area, I'm going to, before running the print, or in this case, the cut, I'm going to frame the the area and what that does is it gives me an idea of where the cut's going to take place. You also notice that I have four little uh, magnets holding things there in, in a specific area so things don't move. So when I press the, the frame it, I'm going to select the items that I want to frame, which is going to be the circle and the graphic. And then I'm going to hit frame and this is going to be in light burn. And then what it's going to do is it's going to draw the area so I can see where the cut's going to be. Now you'll notice that it looks like it could be, it could come off. I'm not quite sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this down a little bit. And then I'm going to run it one more time. That looks a little better. Move it a little bit more one more time. Let's see, I want to keep that wood in the center. All right, that's much better. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start the burn. And again, first thing it's gonna do is start the engraving. After the engraving, it's gonna go ahead and then do the cut. Now we completed several cuts that I just want to share with you. So first of all, we uh, created these cuts here uh, for a box that we're going to be putting on together. Um, all the cuts came out uh, pretty nice, right? So if you take a look at this one right here, this one has all of the uh, pop-outs, right? Where all these pieces are going to connect to. This is actually the base. Came out really, really nice. And keep in mind that we don't have an air assist. So what I did was I ran it at a lower power and ran more cuts or more passes so that I could keep the wood as clean as possible because if you don't then you're going to deal with the situation very similar to I would say the sample that they provided right so the sample here was running at a much high, uh, slower pace high power and then you can see the charring that took place I was trying to avoid that now the other thing I tried is and I failed at centering right so this isn't a product a problem with the actual uh, laser itself but this is just me uh, so this is uh, a cork coaster I thought I had it centered didn't quite have it centered but you can see how clean and nice that looks. It looks really, really good. So I like the way that looks, that's cork. Uh, I did wood as well. So here's a little wood one. Uh, again, I didn't have air assist, so I was trying to keep things light, but you can see how clean those cuts are and the engraving that we got. And then the last one, once again, uh, was the uh, slate that we did. So um, all in all, really, really happy uh, with the laser engraver. It does a really nice job, very easy to do. 
or use a highly recommend light burn if you're going to get into any kind of laser engraving. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.